So one of the things that I liked about it was the fact that it showed me a different Nigeria that I had no idea existed, right? And in a way, showed me Nigeria as a place to visit, not as a, well, as a visitor and not as somewhere to go out of obligation because it's home, yeah. right? Uh, but rather as a place to, to visit and discover. Uh, and previously, I don't, I don't even think that I thought of Nigeria or even had the, I'll use the word vocabulary, because I, for lack of a better word, of just thinking of, you know, can I go to Nigeria and visit these different cultural sites? Mm -hmm. uh, but I, but I'll, I'll open with this. Um, I like the title, right? So transform the land as both metaphor and place, right? So it's by looking for transform the land. You went looking for, as you talked about in the book, the, the artifice that comes with amusement parks and uh, things like that. That, uh, Of course, when you're in a, in a developed country, in a developed culture, there are all of those things. And then the, the artifice of, of amusement parks also kind of brings all of those things out. But, so you went, look, you went to Nigeria looking for that. And of course you didn't find that, but you found something else hmm. that maybe you weren't even looking for. Yeah, yeah. Can, no. you, can, you talk, can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, I guess, you know, when I went to Nigeria, I, I wanted to travel around the country in the same way that I've done in you know, loads of other African countries. And, uh, you know, like you, I didn't think that it was um, the kind of place that you could just, you know, get on a bus from one city to another and and so yeah it was a complete revelation for me when I you know realized that this is what I could do so you know I went out there and and um, so I was just I was kind of expecting Nigeria to be I was looking for the same kind of experiences that I had in you know Ghana and Ivory Coast and places like that and, um, but actually you know by the end of the trip after five and a half months um, I came away appreciating the sort of indigenous, you know, pre-Christian, pre-Islamic culture. Well, not, maybe not the culture, the, the, the aesthetic, yeah. and, you know, the, um, the masquerades and, and all that kind of thing. It yeah. was, um, you know, for me, that was, that combined with the, the natural beauty yeah. is, you know, something that I really value. And it's something that, you know, is, is under threat as well. You yeah. know. You, know, you get a lot of people who are very, you know, against our indigenous culture because it's not, you know, Islamic or, or, or Christian. And then, you know, you have this neglect of the, the natural environment as well. And, you know, the possibility that we could lose both of them is, you know, um, I found really sad. And that's, that's what I came away with, just loving those two aspects of yeah. the country. And if we do have, if we do promote tourism, it tends to be high-end tourism. Yeah in, you know, Lagos and Abuja, you know, for rich people. Um, but, you know, if you really want people to enjoy uh, Nigeria, you kind of want average tourists to come along, yeah. you know, like the same kind of tourists who would go to Thailand and yeah. places like yeah. that. But in order to do that, you need infrastructure. Yeah. You know? and, and for me, that's sort of the artifice that an amusement, amusement park represents. Yeah. Although as a child I saw that as progress and yeah. I kind of let go of you know that that way of thinking. Still, on the other hand, there is some value to that. If you can't maintain an amusement park which involves uh, you know a constant supply of electricity, electricity and yeah. all that kind of stuff, then that, that reflects and, yeah. something about your country. Yeah. There's a yeah. you know there's a there's a weakness there. Yeah. So I think it is really important that we are able to have things like amusement parks and maintain them, even yeah. though that shouldn't be the big goal. Yeah, yeah. And, and I thought it was, it was a good um, juxtaposition when you talked about the uh, trans when you were there and you paid for these children 
to go on these rides, <laughs> right? So they go on the rides and they're, they're thrilled about it and, and all of that. And then as you're leaving, they're following you and, and oh, they're nice. looking at you yeah. and they're hungry. And then you, you realize that, okay, uh, maybe I shouldn't have paid for them to have <laughs> this ride and forget about their empty stomach. Yeah, yeah. Because at the end of it, <laughs> it probably made them even more hungry. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I ran out of small change. That's yeah. the problem, you know. And uh, I, I just assumed that because they wanted to go on rides, that everything else was taken care of. Yeah. You know, for their kids. <laughs> you know, food, rides, and the Bible city, right? Oh, yeah. Which rep had the, the best representation of what Nigeria could be if everyone just banded together, had a vision, hmm. a single vision of what they want the place to be yeah. because it was orderly and uh, everything was uh, functioning really well. Yeah, yeah. It's, you know, I mean, that's always been Nigeria's problem. It's, it's just a very fragmented society. It's, it's people having different objectives. I mean, everyone wants to be prosperous, but, you know, everyone, people aren't working together, you know, to make that happen. There are, you know, too many people who have their own agendas and, and want to, you know, help their own particular people at the expense of others. But yeah, the church, you know, it's a really sort of functional institution. And I think Nigeria is good at that. We're very good at informal networks yeah. Yeah. and, inst yeah. you know, institutions and just finding a way to just make that happen and scale it up on and, a, a know, national sort of, level yeah so yeah that's you know i kind of i have a lot of misgivings about you know religion in, in nigeria but you know i was impressed it's like you know you look at these ministries and, and the hotels that they own and the properties and every shiny vehicle that i saw in the sort of mile two area of lagos you know always seemed to have like a ministry yeah. logo on the side you know it's like they really got their act together. Maybe we That's need uh, one of those pastors to run for president. No, <laughs> no, 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 thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. A pastor to become president. Yeah.